Welcome to the sleepy South Coast resort of Farmerton. The year is 1964 and things have begun to go awry. The local GP, Dr Wade, has been found murdered in a lay-by. The sole witness, Sid Plummett, is terrified of going to the police. The only person he does trust is little old lady and former double agent, Rose Bean. Late last night, he goes to visit her, but she's not in and he has been followed. All this is taking place in our 400 square foot model we're building here at the Bluebell Railway. When it's finished, it's going to have towns, villages, canals, working roads, haunted castles, and amongst other things, railways. Now, the more observant of you can't have felt to notice that they've started to pop up everywhere. You might also be able to pick out a couple of dirty great big hills, courtesy of our master model maker, Mr. Brian Taylor. Hello, Brian. Hi, Simon. I think it's fair to say that not all the track work you see behind me has been our doing, is it, Brian? No, we've had quite a lot of help from our mates on this one. In fact, you're still hard at it, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still working away. This is the bit at the back of the town, behind the scenery, which you won't see when the model's finished. Well, let's take a couple of minutes just to talk about track lane. In the last episode, we were talking about building a nice solid track bed. We're using 9mm MDF. You don't have to use that, you can use plywood or softboard, lots of things you can use. This is just our way of skinning a cat. Once you've got a nice flat track bed, the next thing to do is to start laying your track. We're using double O, which as you remember is 1 to 76 scale. Now it comes in lots of different flavours, there are straight sections and there are set curves. But because what we want to do is a little bit more organic, what we're going to use is flexible track. The beauty of that is that it flexes just about anywhere you want. So once you've decided what you're going to make your track with, you can start drawing your track out. Now what Brian and I have done here is to actually draw a centre line exactly where our track's going to run. Then we take our flexible track and line it up so that that runs down the centre. Flexible track has got solid plastic sleepers so you can't get the pins through unless you actually drill little holes in it. And what I'm going to use for that is a thing called a pin vise. And what a pin vise is, is essentially a very small drill. Taking this, you're just going to pop through and drill into the baseboard. It doesn't take very long, a little bit of that. Drilling into the baseboard there, that's it. And then you take a pin pop it into the hole and here's a tip start with the large end of the hammer first and then flip it over and use the pointy end just to finish it off if you use this end of it you end up smashing into the track which does it damage and here's our curve nice and solid that's not going to go anywhere and at some point you're going to want to put a join on a curve now slight problem here because the outside rail has further to go, it's actually shrunk back inside the sleepers. Choices are you could cut across there and join another piece of track straight onto it. But Brian, you favour a different system, don't you? Yeah, I, if you try and join two pieces of rail to form a curve like that in the same plane, then the rails are always trying to spring apart, so you get weak joints and, and it's very hard to have a smooth curve going from one to the other. So if you imagine this is two pieces of track rather than one, and you've got joints where my thumbs are, um, then they're not in the same plane, you've slid the rails up, and so you get a much stronger curve and a much smoother curve. And we've got an example of that here. Here's two bits of track, and where the two tracks actually meet, the rail is actually held together by things called fish plates. These are fish plates here. And what happens is you slide your rail all the way along till it meets the other one, nip off the shoe because otherwise the fish plate won't sit properly and then you take your rail and then you slide on your fish plate now they're a nice tight fit or should be if they're loose you can always tap the top of them with a hammer and if you think this is fiddly imagine trying to do this on something half the size oh, get in there Recently I went to see a chap called Brian Harrop, whose fantastic layout entitled Mini Zob includes some of the finest handmade track work I have ever, ever seen. So where's it set? Where are we basing this? This is in Northern Europe. Most of the buildings have been copied from ones we've seen on various trips we've done. So now this, we, we, our model is double O, and then the next one down is N, and the smallest one commercially available is Z, but this is something more than Z, isn't it? This, this, is... This, this is what I like to call Proto-Z, yes. Yeah, it's uh, the same as Z scale, except, of course, I modelled the track work 
to exact scale standards. The flange rate gaps are 0.2 of a millimeter. So you have to make all this track then, presumably. All, all this track is handmade, yes. You've got a narrow gauge running as well. Yes, we've got two gauges running on this. In fact, you've got a narrow gauge and it comes, you've got that, a, you've got right, a dual gauge with track. With a dual there. gauge track as well, yes. That's beautiful. I like the points. That is an incredibly complicated bit of point work. That would be hard enough to do in double O or. Yes, it's just o the same scale. as in double O or O scale. Same number of pieces, they're just all a lot smaller. Turntables all handmade as well. That is very impressive. Very slick. And what about your model here? How do you do your hills? Because I'm always interested. People have different the, techniques about building hills. Yeah, the hills are all just built um, out of plaster, and the rock shapes are impressed with cooking foil. So you screw yeah. it up, screw it up, press it onto the plaster, it gives you a sort of rocky finish. That is very clever. I've never seen that done. So can I have a little look at your uh, tram? Because I think that is yes, an amazing bit of engineering to, to make something of that scale. So that's a narrow gauge Z gauge. So this is a narrow gauge, thick gauge tram car, yes. The body's scratch built out of plastic card and the chassis has been rebuilt out of Marklin parts with a foul harbour motor fitted and of course the gauge narrowed to four and a half millimetres. That is absolutely minute. I mean just to work on that is... It's, it's quite fiddly but you get used to it. There you go. I see my 009 won't run that smoothly. That's phenomenal. Let's have a look in here then. So what's this Brian? That's your new project is it? This is my new P87 layout. So what now? What's, what's P87 then? P87 is HO scale uh, with exact scale track work. Uh, the um, track work is all handmade. And what's the pipe? What's the little copper? The copper tubes across here have got piano wire inside them to operate the points with the little levers at the edge here so you don't have to reach right across the layout to work the points and we disguise, disguise them at the them end. Yeah, disguise them with a bit of luggage or That's something very, like that. very, very clever. So what sort of scene are we looking at? What are, you, what are you making here? This is going to be a model of a Dutch dock scene. Should look like quite nice when it's all done oh, at the end of the day. Yeah. Mm. Now what's this chappy here? This is my first Proto Z layout, which I built several years ago. The the fantastic track, it's almost like it's plaited that track I work. I do it's like fantastic. to make flowing track work, yes, and that's part of the benefit of building your own track work. You can really get it to flow, draw it all out so it's in nice flowing lines and making nice shapes to look at when the layout's all finished. It's absolutely beautiful, but I can't help noticing this. Now to me, this is fantastic. This, this is, is absolutely um, beautiful. one of my very early P87 layouts. It's, um, so this again is fine scale is HO. Fine scale HO. So what's up with what's what's Mr. Stick there? Does that M Mr. Stick is my control that I like to use on this layout. It's a slide control which gives you a nice feel when you're operating the trains. Why don't you give it a go? Can I? All See right, how you get on with I'll, it. Yes. I promise I won't break anything. I'll no, you won't break anything. You're driving this one here. It should take off nice and smooth. That is very very smooth. Yeah. That That's is silky. How comes it's so silky? I can never get mine to run as. That is very, very, yeah, that's very That's got a Dyna Drive clutch in there, driving quite a large brass flywheel, which gives you a nice slow pickup and... Uh, Can we go back the other way? Go back the other way and you'll feel so the inertia as it travels through the point work. You've got a clutch and a big flywheel. And a big flywheel in there, yeah. You've got three gauges of track work in here. We've got three gauges of track work here. That train you've just been operating was operating on the standard gauge. Yeah. We've so got what else have you got there? A metre gauge train here, which is a model of an East German type. And we've got a 760 centimetre Austrian locomotive over the back there. This track it must have been a nightmare to make. It's all good fun. I yeah. mean, it's so fiddly. I mean, there are sort of there are diamond points here in three different gauges. There are diamonds in three different gauges. The turnouts yes. in three gauges. Basically, it's just a case of starting with the narrowest gauge and building up. Wasn't Brian a lovely bloke? Really like Brian. Anyway, back to our story and it's time to meet two more members of our cast. First off, Elizabeth Downing, or Liz to her friends. Extremely attractive, early 40s, and comes from minor nobility. She is married to the unscrupulous Anthony Schooner MP. Now, Anthony Schooner is currently in the offices of Dr. Beeching, arranging the demise of the local railway station. Now, if you can pull this off, it could be in for a knighthood. Now, unfortunately, their marriage turned sour many years ago. So Liz is forced to seek comfort in the arms of others. And today, she's having afternoon tea with a station manager at the Grand Hotel in Farmerton. 
we have to build a hotel, so we came to Brighton for inspiration. Now, you're probably thinking the same idea we are, and when we came here to film the hotel, not really on. But never mind, there's lots of other hotels, and they're all different shapes and sizes. Now this is a particularly difficult thing to model, so we've decided to go kit form. Now there's lots of different manufacturers out there, but these ones are made by Volmer. The beauty of these kits is that all the architectural detail, all the balconies and the balustrades are already made for you. Another one of the advantages is all the parts come already painted. Now this is what they come like in a box of parts like this, and it's just like a model aircraft when you're a kid. They even include the little bits that go behind the windows, so what you can do is you can pop a light in there and at night you have the light shining through with all the different little windows showing out there. So join me after a break and uh, we'll see what Brian thinks of all this lot. What I need now is a box. And here's our collection of seafront buildings. To give you an idea where we are, we'd have a little tram running past the hotels and up here past the beachfront. As lovely as they are, they need a little bit of something extra just to finish them off. And in this case, the little bit of extra something is weathering. It doesn't matter whether you make buildings out of card or plastic, whenever you finish them, they're going to end up looking a bit bright and shiny. And what I've done is I've mixed up this kind of horrible dirgy colour here, and all it's got is got acrylic paint with a little bit of washing up liquid in it. And I've added some black and some brown. It doesn't really matter about the colours, what you're looking for is nice dirgy, horrible kind of mossy liquid like that. All we're going to do is just paint it onto the buildings. Now the reason I've got washing up liquid in this is that without it, the water doesn't really stick to the plastic and what the uh, washing up liquid does is breaks the surface tension and you'll notice that as I do it can you see the brickwork there what's happening is the colour although it's very thin is just sitting in the brickwork you notice that some parts of the building tend to attract dirt more than others the guttering all these little legends where Mr Pigeon lives all these little bits and pieces here all collects little bits of took and the good thing about using this very thin mixture is it tends to hang in those places exactly like the real thing does on the outside world. And here we are, look at this. This is your original model, all bright and shiny, little bit plasticky. And look at this. Now here we go. This is with a little bit of weathering on it. Much, much better. All right, admittedly I've gone a little bit over the top, but you get the general idea. And it's worth remembering that 60s weren't all swinging parties and miniskirts. Some of it was a bit grubby, just like this hotel. <laughs> Now forget about world religion, politics, cross-dressing, what we're going to talk about now is more controversial than all three of them put together. Brian, what is the hot topic? Building hills. Building hills, and that sounds innocent enough, but believe you me, it can be a world of hurt. Brian, how could we have gone about it? Well, we could have used plaster bandage and chicken wire. Very prickly, very messy. Or we could have used papier-mâché. Papier-mâché, thing like this would have taken forever. We could have used polystyrene blocks and put plaster on top. Could have done, but then we would have had to have the uh, liners and all the packaging from 20,000 TV sets, and I don't think the budget would have run to that. <laughs> and of no. course then there is the Brian Taylor method. Now, when you first told me about this, I didn't believe this would ever fly. And having seen what we've done in a couple of days, I am a convert. Brian, how do we go about it? Well, it's basically strips of um, bendy MDF. Now, this isn't the 9mm MDF, is it? This is a bit thinner. What's that? It's 3mm. 3mm. So basically, what we're doing is we're building a little rib cage structure, isn't it? That's what we've done here. Yeah. So we didn't just use the old sticky tape on the, uh, on the back of the model, did we? We had the... We had the old hot glue gun as well, didn't we? Yeah, that's right. And we also held it up with bits of 3 by one Oh, that's for the big section so it didn't sag. Yeah, it was a bit saggy the way. All right, now we've got that on, let's start putting the covering on it because this doesn't look much like a hill at the moment. And what have we got there? Well, this is basically art paper and um, it's very good stuff because you can soak it and you can pour glue on it and you can do all sorts of things to it and it survives quite nicely. Fairly nice. resilient. So now, what we do is we tear it up into triangles. All right, let's get cracking and tearing up. Now, why do you do triangles, Brian? Uh, because triangles follow curve shapes better than square things do. Oh, okay. You know, All like right. a geodesic dome, you know, All that right, sort of okay. thing. Now, you're using just a spray glue on there, aren't you? But, I mean, we could use PVA, couldn't we? Yeah, we're just doing it around the edge at the moment. So all I'm doing is just popping a section on there. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. There you go. And it does go on really quick. A little bit more on there. Shall I glue you up? Yep. Yeah, I'll pop it down there so I don't spray your entire head. There we are, <laughs> mate. There we are. I used to come in here and look at this, and I used to look at those baseballs and think, they're going to be huge hills. <laughs> How, <laughs> How on earth are we going to do this? 
And uh, so a few, I put a few bits of wood up to get the markers for the heights in places. And I looked at it again and I thought, they're even bigger than I thought they were. They are big so, so it was a matter of you know, thinking for quite a long time what the easiest way of doing it would be. Now I'm well aware that this looks as rough as old boots at the moment, but in a few minutes time I'm going to show you how to turn this into a lush looking hillside. Yeah, I think uh, this bit could go in here. But watch this first. <laughs> So the first thing I know is I'm walking around and I see that damn railway. Now it's not because you're unhappy with it, is it? No, it's not because we're unhappy with it. We like it. It's, it's our railway. That damn railway, the name just grew because it, it was a natural name. So John, talk us through it. What are we looking at here? Well this model represents a dam. A dam in the early 1900s in Wales being built with the aid of steam locomotives mainly and tracks that were laid to, to service and bring the uh, stones, the cement and so on up to the dam itself. So tell me about the little funeral over there John, that looks a bit of a tragic affair. It was indeed, one of the poor fellows that was working on the top of the dam fell off, the glue wasn't quite good enough. Oh no, oh no, you've got good insurance. <laughs> nice little chapel and then on the next layer up there, what have we got up there? Well that's where the layout goes up and up the, uh, the hillside in order to get to the higher levels and to get to the top of the dam. Oh, so this is the zigzag thing you're talking about. Zigzag so we go up, and then we go up, and that's then we right. go up, and then... That's right. So that's prototypical, that's what Absolutely, that's what, it, that's what was used, and it's used on a, a few railways where there's very steep terrain, yes. Oh, I never, I never realised it. It looks like you've had a bit of a uh, issue over here. Something's gone wrong there, isn't it? Well, just now and again, there's uh, one of the drivers might have a bit of a problem, and... Uh, bit of a drinking problem, Well, so I wouldn't like to say that, but a few of the wagons did fall off into the into the river one day and uh, they are now semi-buried really. Oh well let, let's let's leave that alone let's let's move around to this bit which is the most stunning part here look at that moving cranes yes the cranes were used at the top of the dam to obviously bring the material up and they swivel as well now these cliffs you've got a very clever technique with cliffs haven't you that I've never heard of before yes the the rocks are made from dental plaster and the rocks are cast into moulds and a lot of the moulds were made using latex poured onto a piece of coal such that the coal gives the mould the shape and if you look at a piece of coal carefully you'll see the nice sort of strata that it's got. It's very realistic isn't it? I mean that is a very hard thing to get right to scale up. Yes, isn't it? we painted it with about four colours. Let's talk about some of these buildings. This is quite interesting down here, isn't it? Let's yes, look there, there's a crusher plant there which is the plant which obviously mixes the sand Is this this chap here? Is he the crusher? Support. <laughs> That's the crusher. And that crushed up all the, all the bits of rock right. and minerals. Right. To transport and that made out. the uh, sand and cement and so on that they could use uh, for building the dam itself. And what about that little unit over there? What's in there? Down the bottom there is a little uh, stone dressing shed because the stones came from the quarry which is modelled over there and then from the quarry they were taken to the stone dressing sheds where they were made into regular blocks which you can see on the front face of the dam. So you've got the whole thing there, you've got the quarry where they get the raw right. material out, they come round into yes, the dressing shed, yeah. then they pop it up there and that's the raw materials and then for all the rest of it they crush it up, bring it up here into the crusher. Right, yes, behind the stone face it's just uh, pieces of rock and, and cement and so on, yes. Okay John, so now tell, why is there a hole in but, the dam? But uh, it's actually to help build the, the dam, so the, the engine can run through there to the back of the dam and then of course when it comes to the point where they're about to fill it up they can fill that part up and then that will be watertight. Oh okay, so that would have been the last thing you block up? Then you take out the track and uh, block it up with stones and cement and so on, yeah. There's a nice little trappy down here, the likes of which I haven't seen before, what's he? Well he's a little engine which uh, is known as Scorcher, it's a Manning Wardle and uh, it's end of the 1800s and he's pulling a, a selection of trucks there which have got the big rocks on and they are on their way to the dressing shed in order to be made into stones for the front of the dam. How long did this take to make John and did you... Uh... Well this took about four or five years, I didn't build it all myself I must admit. I'm a member of the Chelmsford Model Railway Club and we built it, there are about six of us involved and it took us about four or five years to get it to this sort of level. John, it's a lovely layout. Thank you. I think it's very, very interesting. It just shows you you can do something different. Absolutely. Brian's just nipped round the back to sort something out. I uh, can't tell you too much about it, but you'll find out in a minute. Anyway, as promised, I'm going to show you how to turn this rather bleak landscape into a wonderful looking hill. First off, PVA glue, our old friend. 
Don't be afraid of using it. The more you use, the merrier. Stick it on like that, big, big globules. Now, I know it's gone on quite heavy, but what we're going to do is just brush it out a little bit. Nothing, nothing too fancy, just smear it in, really, more than brushing it in. I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to do a bigger bit because I'm feeling ambitious. Here we go. Section like that. Just wobble it all in. Nice and easy. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Bit of that. Bosh, there we go. Right, and then what I'm going to do then is we're going to put on some foliage. Now, foliage is stuff that you get from model shops. It comes in different grades, and I'm going to start on the heavier one. Here's some of it here. And what you do, you pull it apart, you just tease it out a little bit. There you go. And what I'm going to do is just pop that on there. There you go. Pop it on there. Now I'm going to do another bit. Same thing. doesn't have to be fussy. You don't have to make a big fuss about this. You can play with this stuff. It's very good gear. And there we are. Now we're going to start with the finer stuff. What we're going to use is flock. You can get this at modelling stores. Chuck it on. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And I'm just down the hill with this stuff. Now you see why we put on the heavy stuff first. Because when the light stuff goes around it, the heavy stuff starts to look like bushes. And if you do it the other way around, the trouble is the bushes look like they've just been plonked on top of a bit of grass. So it's not quite as good as effect. So sprinkle this stuff on, and here's a tip. As you get a little way down, just put it on, and then using the back of your hands, just push it down like that. Just tease it down like that. Now you can see it coming into shape there. One of the reasons I use the back of the hand, if you push with your fingers, you get finger marks. Look at that, if I did that, see? Instantly you get little finger marks, and it's hard to fill. Now don't worry so much that you can see a bit of white through this. Remember, the card is green, and the PVA tends to dry transparent anyway. So it's not really gonna show that much. And look at that, a few minutes work and you've got half the hillside covered. Very, very easy, very, very quick. Now imagine a few of you get stuck into this lot and you can have it all done over the weekend. Now I said Brian was up to something round the back and this is what he's been up to. There's no point in having all this track unless you've got something to run on it. And what he's been doing around there is building a makeshift controller so we can run our first train. Brian, are you ready? Hi Simon, yes I'm ready. Here we are, let it go. This is our first locomotive to run on our new layout. And there she goes. What is it? What are we running, Brian? That is a Merchant Navy class loco. It's very smooth, isn't it? Look at that. Yeah, it's running beautifully. Straight out of the box. That is absolutely... Now you get a sense of the scale. That's when you get a real idea of how big this thing is. That is great. So you pleased with that, Brian? Absolutely. Blinding result, I'd say. Well done. Now this is a bit worrying. Rose has finally found Sid's note and has arrived at his house only to find it's been firebombed and Sid is missing. This is not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs>